Let's go back to the phone lines, talk to Heather in Branson, Missouri. Heather is listening on Bot Radio. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hank. How are you? Can you I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm doing well, thank you. Um, my question to you, um, I am very confused by um, a lot of, I live in a very Christian community, and um, there are a lot of people here that are very anti-abortion, which I understand, but these same people that I know are also anti-government programs to help people that don't have much, and they're also supporters of war. So I feel like that's hypocrisy. How, how can you say that an unborn life is so protected and yet... There are those living on earth that we bomb and destroy without thought. Well, a couple of things. Uh, the, the first thing is that you don't want to uh, simply dismiss one on account of the other. Uh, you need to look at each one of these issues independently. The first thing I would look at, as I did, is abortion. Abortion is the painful killing of an innocent human being, as I said at the outset of the broadcast. And, uh, and, and therefore, as Christians, we should be against killing those who are created in the image and likeness of God. In terms of war, we need to look at war in such a way that it is just war, as opposed to war that uh, may be reckless. A war in defense of justice has to be fought justly. And therefore, uh, we may kill a kid with a bomb that's strapped to his back, but we may never shoot an innocent baby in the arms of its mother. In terms of government programs, I mean, I think as Christians, we have to be supporting those things that are effective. Is the government the most effective means of uh, helping people with welfare programs, or is the private sector the most effective means? So we have to look at what is most effective, but are we to be involved in the welfare of other people? Absolutely. It's axiomatic to the Christian ethic. Of course, and especially if you insist that I'm a single mom, and I, and I have other single mother friends that chose to have their babies and who have a very difficult time surviving because it's so easy for men to leave. And... You know, we are we are constantly confronted with how do we survive now? Now we've done it. Now tell us how to survive. When you're saying, you, you know, like I said, I know, I know this isn't all Christians, but in my community, you know, it's pick yourself up by the bootstraps. And we don't, the government doesn't owe you anything. Well, then tell us what to do because daddies aren't involved. They walk away all the time. Well, again, this is why God places parameters around our lives so that our lives will indeed be full and unfettered by these kinds of things. And, and, and that's why in a Christian ethic you don't have sex outside of marriage because there are consequences to that. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, one of the big problems involves men walking away from their responsibilities, and that's why marriage is critical. And that uh, we understand love not just to be a feeling, but love to be a commitment. Uh, feelings ebb and flow. Uh, commitments are made. When I committed myself to my wife, I made a commitment for better or worse, sickness or health. Whatever the circumstances, I'm committed. Uh, and, and, and that's what marriage is. Uh, marriage is founded on a commitment that you make before God and men. And the hell of it today is people have relationships, they bring babies into the world, and those babies oftentimes are not cared for through gender differentiated uh, parenting, which is necessary for the well-being of a child. All sociological metrics point to that. Uh, but this is not in any way uh, to say, look, because there are attendant problems in society, uh, we should abort. Uh, abortion is the worst of all possibilities because you're killing a human being that's made in the image and likeness of God. And, and that simply should not be in the vocabulary or in the worldview of anyone who has a relationship with the one who spoke in the universe, leapt into existence. In fact, the one who knitted you together in your mother's womb. 
You're fearfully and wonderfully made. All the days ordained for you are written in his book before one of them came to be. And, and one of the things that should never be part of our vocabulary and part of the equation is killing a human being. Again, because a human being has intrinsic value because that human being is made in the image and likeness of God. And killing a preborn child is a particularly horrendous evil because this is uh, the killing of the most innocent among us, the most vulnerable among us. So we should be doing all we can as Christians to protect lives like that. Uh, but, you know, the great thing is even when we do violate God's commands, though there are consequences, God does forgive and reconciliation is possible even with an aborted child because one day that child will be resurrected, immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. If the Bible is to be believed in, I make a case that it is a reliable authority. Be right back.